The Infrastructure Act is $1.2 trillion of new spending. A lot of that's going to go into things like transportation, roads, bridges. You can imagine what that's going to do to commodities. And here's one example that, uh, that affects silver. Of that uh, spending, $7.5 billion alone is going to go into a 500,000 EV charger network in the U.S. And that's a big demand for silver. With all these big trends happening, what are the implications for silver? So this chart shows us, um, it certainly looks like investors are starting to pay attention to alternative assets. As I say, the dollar's been down since September by 10%, and these are all numbers since, since September. Gold is up 15%, silver's up 24%, and gold and silver miners are up 34%. So it certainly looks like the generalist investor is starting to pay attention to this sector, um, obviously disappointed with what happened in um, stocks and bonds last year, and perhaps expecting, as I do, for more and more that that kind of return is gonna be um, playing out going forward. I talked about the dollar. Well, if you do the research, you'll see that the correlation between the US dollar in the last 20 years or so, the US dollar and silver, is a negative 80%. That's a really high correlation. That means that you can explain 80% of the time the move up or down in the silver price by what's happening at the dollar. And given that, well, at least in my view, that the dollar has peaked, and likely to start heading lower and stay lower for years ahead, I think that that's gonna be a big tailwind for, uh, for the silver price. Here's an interesting thing about some research done by Oxford Economics. So they looked back to the last 23 years, they ran a, a number of simulations, varied the different asset classes within a portfolio to see what, what contribution silver could have to the average portfolio. And so, it was interesting to see that, and we're talking about just silver, nothing to do with silver stocks. If you include silver at about 5% um, to a portfolio, you do two things. You lower the risk and you increase the returns. That's ideal in terms of what you want for adding a, a specific asset class to your portfolio. So what I don't have here is what Oxford did afterwards. So they said, okay, given their own models, they looked forward 10 years and they said, what kind of allocation to silver would make sense to, again, decrease risk, improve returns? And the, and the result was actually 6% rather than 5% over the next 10 years. And one of the reasons that they um, justify that is they feel that silver has not moved the way gold has and so it has less downside risk. So here's some, a couple of really interesting points that they brought out. Silver not only adds value, but it uh, diversifies, it lowers your risk. The average current portfolio across the board really has only about 0.2% exposure to silver. And that's indirectly through commodities, either commodities producers or commodities funds, that kind of thing. In order to get to the 6% that Oxford Economics recommends, the average portfolio would need to multiply its silver exposure by 30 times. If you would just get to 2%, which is a third of the recommended exposure, you'd still need to multiply your exposure to silver by 10 times. So I think silver being a very small market, it takes very little buying to move the market significantly. And um, here's an example of how that, the impact. Silver, the silver market is about a tenth the size of the gold market. Here, multiple metals. Silver is all the way on the left. It's about $17 billion a year. The gold market is about $170 billion a year. And so the attraction for silver in terms of the potential upside from buying that steps in really could make the, move, the market move considerably. When will we see a big move in price upward for silver? So silver trails gold. Uh, gold is the leader. So uh, I base myself on how and when I expect gold to move. And for me, I, I believe that the most likely trigger is going to be, uh, and this could happen in advance because markets price things in in advance, but for the market to sniff out um, and, and end to rate hikes, obviously uh, they, they look at the Fed in particular, the largest economy, the most influential. And so when the market sniffs out an end to, to rate hikes, that's when I think that uh, we can see gold really start to take off. Silver will, will very much uh, follow that. And that's, I believe, going to be the, the trigger for much, much higher prices in both metals.
I think that, uh, you know, you look at uh, the last, say, five months or so, um, when the dollar index peaked at, a, at 112, we're currently around 104. It actually bottomed close to 100, 102. It's had this recent counter trend rally from, from that level. And we're at, we've been just recently over 105. I think we could actually see the dollar index go somewhere to 106, 107. You know, the, the technicals are perhaps useful in terms of an indicator in that case. The 200 day moving average is around 106, a little over that. That might end up being some sort of, a, of uh, overhead resistance for the, for the dollar index. And so from there, I would, would not be surprised to see it peak and start to pull back. So this recent counter trend rally, I think in the, in the dollar index is what has put some pressure on silver and uh, gold. It's interesting to, to note that over the last 23 years, um, there's been a, a negative correlation between silver and the US dollar of 80%. So that's a really strong correlation. If you wanna have, if you wanna decide wh where you think silver is going, um, you have to determine what your thesis is for the dollar. And in my case, at least, I think that we are in a longer term downward trend for the dollar, a secular bear. Uh, it peaked in uh, 1985 at 160, I believe, the dollar index. In 2002 at 120, last year at 112. So these are lower successive peaks. I believe we're in a multi-decade downward trend in the dollar. Uh, my first target in the dollar index is somewhere around 95. As I say, we're around 104 right now. And then ultimately, you know, sort of maybe medium term, somewhere around 90, which is where we were pre-COVID uh, in terms of a, of a low in the dollar index. So industrial demand is made up of things like uh, uh, medical applications, electronics, uh, automotive, and, um, and one really big one, uh, I'm going to say the actual elephant when it comes to industrial demand for, for silver is uh, solar power because uh, it's the single largest factor um, in silver demand on the industrial side. It represents 12% of the entire annual uh, demand for silver for the entire market. So really, if you've for, to look and, and to determine where uh, industrial demand is headed, um, on the silver in the silver sector, you have to really watch very closely solar and solar has just been roaring. It's been it's been tremendous. And I think that a lot of the forecast for uh, demand for silver from the solar side in terms of uh, solar panel production has been underestimated. 12% of total demand, that's 140 million ounces out of 1.2 billion ounces. Um, if you look at just some recent forecasts and, and not that far out, the International Energy Agency forecast over the next five years that uh, electricity from solar is going to triple globally. So, uh, and I've, and, and some of their forecasts that go even farther out, it's obviously the farther out you, you go, the harder it is to be uh, precise and accurate. But just on that basis, um, their forecast for 2030, that's eight years out, uh, would be that global uh, electricity from solar would be up eight and a half times current levels. So even on that basis, you're looking at eight and a half times, say 140 million ounces. Uh, and I, and I, my calculation actually was before the, the recent um, uh, up, upgrade in terms of demand. So we're at, in eight years, almost the entire annual supply of silver, recycling and mining would go just to solar just to solar. We haven't talked about any other industrial applications. We haven't talked about uh, investment demand. We haven't talked about jewelry. We haven't talked about uh, silverware. So, and, and a lot of these applications, there are always new applications being developed. And, um, you know, silver is the most conductive of all metals. It's the most reflective of, of all metals. It's, it's no surprise you're seeing it everywhere. If you look at the automotive industry, there are dozens of applications in, not even in, in uh, more technologically advanced cars, just cars of the last say 10 years or so, say internal combustion engine cars, that uh, there are all kinds of applications that use silver. Every contact you could imagine, uh, your electric windows, your push uh, start button, everything has silver in it because it's conductive and it's reliable. It doesn't corrode easily and it transmits quickly the energy. And so uh, you find it everywhere.